scouting staff has focused their sights on adding. Holy shit, that scared the fuck out of me. I'm Nick Gallo, a USA Hockey Level 4 coach, a former WHL scout, and lifelong hockey guy. It's been a dream getting to work in the hockey world, but I also like to have a little fun. Okay, a lot of fun. Welcome to Holding Court. I just want to let everyone know that uh, my ass is currently in stable condition after sitting on the hardest wood ever uh, seats at Toyota Sports Center. I don't know if they, did they take a survey and ask people, what's the most fucking uncomfortable thing to sit on? I think what they did was they traveled and they wanted to find an element that was the most brutal on people's asses and then they wanted to build the uh, bleachers with that. It, you know, they did a good job there. Also, I got, I want to complain about some more shit. They marketed this development camp scrimmage, right? Scrimmage to me means a five on five. I know some of the fans that come out there are like myself. They go there during the scrimmage to evaluate players, see how they look in real game situations. You know, these three on three and four on four stuff, I get it. Like the casual fans are obviously gonna be way more into it. It's back and forth, fast, fast, fast. It really illuminates the skill players and uh, that's one reason it makes it harder to gauge and evaluate players in a three on three or four on four because it's just like a skills competition. It's catered toward the small flashy forward. If you have any offensive ability, you're gonna look beautiful. So three on three or four on four, man. Sorry, millennials, but that's not real hockey. Sorry. I'm gonna add in a caveat, which probably you know, but a development camp scrimmage is one showing. You can't bank everything on that. This is just my evaluation from the scrimmage. Anyways, the main takeaway from this development camp, Rob Blake's development camp and Dean Lombardi's development camp looked a whole lot different. Now, Dean Lombardi's development camps used to have a lot of guys who were character guys, two-way guys, you know, big guys, and... Uh, not a lot of skill, not a lot of high-end scoring ability. Completely different with Rob Blake's. Most of these defensemen that were at camp are offensive defensemen. I don't know if there's one stay-at-home guy there. You have guys like Tobias Bjornfoot, who puck-moving D-man. Kim Nosyainen, who's another puck-moving D-man. Reminds me a little bit of like a Brian Rafalski type, uh, smaller... A uh, very mobile, good passer. Jared Anderson Dolan, he got himself into some NHL games last season. And uh, he's a real high-end prospect. Good two-way forward. Um, he looked good. He looked good. Did, I, I wouldn't say he looked the best. I thought I liked other guys better than him. Mikey Anderson's a guy I really like. Captain for the U.S. World Junior Team. Just a really good, talented defenseman didn't stick out to me in the scrimmage, uh, didn't really notice him. Alex Turcotte, fifth overall pick, he looked really good. He had a beautiful goal right in front of the net. He got a pass, made one stick handle, had the goalie slide in the other way and buried it. Just showed real good front of the net hands and poise. He also plays a complete game. He's a complete center. Um, Blake Lazat was my number one player. I thought he was the best player out there. He's a 97, so... A little bit older, kind of helped him. He looked great out there. I mean, that guy flies. Arthur Kaliev, uh, he didn't do a lot for me. I saw one play where he kind of adjusted his body and got himself into a scoring position on kind of a hard puck. Um, I liked that, but other than that, uh, didn't notice him much at all. Rasmus Kupari, obviously a very highly regarded prospect. Um, he looked good. He looked really good. Uh, just very complete and I really like his shot. He's got a crazy hard wrist shot, but he can pass the puck as well. Passer and a shooter with Kupari. Lucas Perrick, the uh, big Czech goalie that the Kings drafted this year. He was my standout goalie, no question. Big guy, 6'4", he played huge. He made a crazy acrobatic stop on a two-on-one. Um, and right after that, he also made another crazy save, which the, the 
people in the stands were cheering. I don't know if they were cheering though. They might have been cheering or they might have been calling for an ambulance because all of their asses were fucking falling off. Johan Sodergren is was one of my stars from from this scrimmage. Uh, I really loved the way he looked out there. A uh, bigger guy who really can pass the puck. He also scored a nice goal. He really likes Sodergren a lot. Um, probably going to play in Ontario next season. I wouldn't be crazy shocked if he made the big club, though. I think he's going to make a little bit of a push. Uh, played in the SHL and put up pretty good numbers last year, so not a crazy jump for him. Marcus Phillips. Uh, I like him. He's got a great first pass. He's a good passer. Mm -hmm. He made a one uh, outlet pass that led to a breakaway that was just right on the money. Just perfect pass. Braden Doyle, uh, 2019 pick. He surprised me. He looked really good. Good puck moving defenseman. See, there's, there's a theme here. Anyways, yeah. Very promising, like I said, to see a ton of skill as opposed to Dean Lombardi's development camps. Not to shit on Dean Lombardi. He was a little bit allergic to drafting skill. And Rob Blake has now geared Mike Fuda and the scouting staff in the direction of skill. I think the Kings are really going to be addressing their scoring woes uh, with this group of prospects here. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on the next video.